What do you think, Monty? Is that... Uh... Well, I wanted to ask a question. I mean, there's a famous saying which um, some of our friends uh, have, have said, um, that you can't have democracy in, in a tax haven. Now, I'm not saying for one moment that Jersey is a tax haven. Clearly, we're a well-regulated offshore centre. <laughs> but <coughs> is that something which you think is true? Um, I'm not sure about that. I think what that depends on, really, is how... I think it's true as a fact, certainly, uh, at, at the moment, but I think what it depends on, though, is whether um, the Jersey working class, you know, the Jersey underclass, the various social groups that make up uh, social movements, by that I mean disabled people, you know, Portuguese people, uh, gays, whatever, diff different strands of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a, like a... Um, of a social movement, it really depends on whether those can be mobilised or not, you know, because really uh, those people who control the island and the finance industry are few in number uh, and they wouldn't have the electoral ability to keep their majority if we could find the secret to getting the ordinary workers and the ordinary people and the ordinary families out to vote for just liberals. I'm not even saying vote left or vote socialist, I'm just saying vote for Greens, vote for progressives, vote for people who care about human rights. I mean, Isn't it, don't you think it's just a mathematical problem because you have, you have a small population here, less than 100,000 people. Mm. In the UK there are say 60,000 lawyers. If you get 1% of 60,000 lawyers, you've got a group of lawyers who are campaigning. Mm. If you get 1% of Jersey lawyers, you've got two and a bit lawyers at the most. That's all there are, there's 250 lawyers. So to get action groups, to get an action group in the medical world, get doctors, it's just mathematically too small. And you're, if you say the number of people who are politically active in the UK, in fact it's a very small number, but mathematically, that if you have the same percentage, you just don't have enough to form active groups. Do you? This is one of the no. It can work both ways, I mean, because, for example, when we have government consultations, green papers, um, you know, whether it's the Carswell report we just had on the, the reform of the bailiff and the Attorney General, or if it's to do with health, you only need a small but vocal group of people who are well researched to actually make a difference because mm. there'll be so few people contributing to those things that, that it's, it's very easy for uh, a group of um, focused individuals with a, hopefully a progressive agenda to make a difference. So there, there are pros and cons, but of course, you know... You've got to get those... I mean, obviously, the groups like the Chamber of Commerce are organised. Those are the groups that are the business community is always organized by its very nature yeah. that it has its own <laughs> impetus but for, for a, to get a group of people who are interested in uh, some social issue it's not so easy is it you've yeah. got to find some particular social issue which suddenly arises and somebody's got a particular illness and there's nobody treating it it's very difficult to get a, well, a group been together one, that has been one of the problems is that um, since Norman the Brock and Stella Perkins and the Jersey Communist Party and the Jersey Democratic Movement, which was well organised, and that's why, where my politics started when I was a teenager, since then, I think the various groups that have been established, you know, we haven't really pulled together in the way that we should and, and, and the way that uh, would be desired. You know, I think that the problem has been we're, we're, sh we're short on uh, numbers and we're short on ideas, and yet we don't tend to pool resources properly we don't tend to work together, as I said before. Well, the big missing it's individual personalities, you know, it's like Stuart Sivray fights his own personal battles on his own and is generally unwilling to work with other people on a collective basis. And, that, and as an example, I'm not picking on Stuart per se, but I'm just saying that's an example of what happens in well, Jersey. Independent prima donnas is the, is, the, is, the, is the perpetual problem, but the one organisation, the one big missing link, of course, is trade unions. Yeah. There is a reasonably strong trade union here, but it's so politically inactive, isn't it? I, I think that's where the, your point about mathematics and the numbers is actually true, because uh, you have a system in Jersey where the activists and the politicians are essentially the same people. So. Uh, you know, you become an activist and then you go into politics because that seems to be the most uh, efficient way to effect change. Of course it isn't. It's a way, but um, there isn't really a, an extra parliamentary body of people which needs to be based around the union but based around ordinary people and their interests. Um, that can actually be separate from politicians who aren't worrying simply about getting elected at the next elections. Mm. And I think that's the trouble because once you've been in for three or six years you, you find yourself, even the best of us, actually moderating what you know is correct just to perhaps get elected you know i'm not saying that's in, in my case but 
to the best of us that can happen. That's, you need that group of people, whether it's a Liberal Party or a Labour Party or a Green Party, to actually say, no, this is the policy that we want you to be doing. You're our representative. And uh, if you're not doing the job anymore as we want you to, then um, you know you have to go. There's no accountability, and that's part of the problem in Jersey. Of course, Gary only did one term, and when you did, uh, when the, the voters didn't put you in again, you you were doubly uh, embarrassed because you couldn't get a job. Uh, the truth of it, work was short, and you couldn't get employment. Being a political person, sort of put a black mark on you, didn't it? It did, really. Yes, but I mean. That's certainly true, and, and um, that was difficult to deal with. So, myself and my family, we had to leave the island because uh, employment prospects were were, uh, were poor. I couldn't really get on, having been a controversial political figure, really. Um, but uh, two, two two points have occurred to me, really. Uh, one is that um, being an admirer of Marxism and uh, the economic analysis of capitalism. Um, it's really economic factors which are most important and so going back to this question of whether things will ever change in Jersey um, I think the economics will change things it won't be civil rights it won't be human rights it won't be um, some of the other issues that we, we spoke about which as I say do, do sometimes take 30 odd years to uh, to be put into practice of, of hard struggle um, but I think the economic factors now Jersey's in recession and uh, working class and middle class families are feeling that recession you know they're feeling it right in their domestic scenario at home and uh, in terms of prices and uh, and uh, well if one of these banks these of famous banks world-class banks goes bust i think jersey would immediately have a huge mm. problem wouldn't it so i think that's the thing to watch out for i think that's where <coughs> the trade unions and the uh, and the workers and, and even middle class voters are starting to turn slightly now and that is uh, to do with economic conditions it's not not really due to anything we've done it's due to economic conditions of capitalism, of international finance and capitalism. But what we've got to have, we've got to have that alternative. So it links back to the second point that I was going to mention, which is that, um, you know, it, 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 progressives should fight for what they believe in, where they live. <coughs> so it's no good, uh, I mean, I, I meet lots of activists in the UK who are active on Venezuela and Cuba and Latin American struggles. And I will say to them, well, you know, you're actually a progressive in the UK and what are you doing to help the struggle and the movement in the UK? Well, it's rather like the, the Amnesty International group here. I welcome their activities, but as you say, they're probably looking more at Venezuela. Mm. But if you ask them to talk about human rights in Jersey as individuals, they don't want to know. So mm. I do find that sort of uh, conflict. Uh, we had that strange. with Christian Aid, didn't we, recently? Christian Aid, obviously very respectable organisation, they've got a Jersey branch, and they do great work mm. and as soon as Christian Aid, the, the, the national body, um, issued a paper criticising tax havens and places right. like Jersey because they actually are involved in creating poverty and maintaining it, the, the Jersey group were very quick to dissociate themselves from the national group, yes. so you know, um, the, the loyalty is local for, first and foremost. Um, your, uh, just to bring you back to the aspect that uh, Gary experienced when he lost his seat, does that bother you, Monty? Because obviously, if you don't get elected this time, next time, whenever, it isn't, it's a rather precarious business to be in politics in Jersey if you don't have money, isn't it? A lot of the members are very wealthy. It doesn't matter to them. But people like yourself and Gary have got to survive. You've got to make a living doing something. Indeed. I mean... Um it doesn't worry me on a personal level because I, fortunately I've got youth on my side, I've, you know, I speak several languages, I can travel if I want to and I, I've got a, mod, a modest uh, business interest which I could develop, um, so I'm not worried about that, but I, I have um, had a debate with myself as to whether I could be more effective in the States or actually outside the States and actually campaigning for the beginnings of party politics or, or a renewed um, party political system in Jersey because um, I, I don't think that's gonna it's not gonna happen easily and in spite of economic factors you know it's, it's not gonna just appear one day there needs to be um, some kind of leadership but there also needs to be a grassroots movement and a desire for it um, so in that sense yeah I, if people want to elect me they'll, they'll do that if they're happy with my policies they'll, they'll do that but because um, people like you see people say time and time again oh we've got all these people elected we don't need all these people they're paid far too much 
But in fact, it isn't a fantastic amount of money. And if you're, if you are, you're a single bloke as far as I know, if you are a married person, you've got a family, 40 odd thousand isn't a huge amount of money to try and bring up a family on, is it, if this is the situation you're in? Well, in the 90s it was even worse, because uh, if I remember correctly, the uh, income support was only 10,000 per annum, you know, for working class candidates, so there was no real financial incentive in getting elected. I took a massive drop in salary to, uh, to become a deputy because uh, I was in a uh, managerial role before that um, and we had £8,000 of expenses which was to uh, do all the research and uh, expenses that the deputy would have over the year so it was certainly not significant it's a bit better now the package but really perhaps we should have less states members and uh, states members with re research assistance you know actually a proper paid yeah. parliamentary system. I'd agree with that. It's, it's not so much the money. Um, I think as long as you're comfortable and you don't have to be worrying about paying the bills. Um, there's an argument that some put forward that we should be paid the average wage. But, um, you know, mm. all, all I'd say is, as somebody who doesn't own his own house, uh, I'm paying quite a large sum in rent and I've got all the other overheads. Um, we get a very small amount of expenses. I'd prefer to perhaps get paid less, but to have, as Gary says, um, access to a, a research assistant or even just a shared PA with, with another state's member. Uh, mm. That would mm. take a lot of the stress off, so we could actually get down to the, you know, the, the proper work that, that we're required to do. Mm. But as a parish deputy, uh, and you'll, you'll know this as well, Gary, you're dealing sometimes with, um, I'm not going to say trivial issues, you're de dealing with important issues on a, on a very local scale to do with parking, to do with dustbins, to do with uh, noise, um, and you're dealing with states' propositions to do with uh, international finance and to do with discrimination laws, yep. etc., or the mm. lack of discrimination laws. And so it's, it's a pretty diverse job, mm. and it's we're essentially 24 hours 7. I've been yeah. called out at 3 o'clock in the morning sometimes to try and help out with domestic problems, you know, and that's so it's not a straightforward. Uh, job but it's, no. fle it's flexible which I like but uh, you know there's a lot of unseen work um, and unseen pressure that um, people don't don't always know mm. about. Well also uh, you know there's all that constituency work re representing your district as you say and then you're very busy as a state's member anyway with, with, with little assistance um, but also when you have a reputation for taking up uh, you know human rights issues uh, the whole island contacts you. Not, you know, it's not, not just that you're a deputy for St. Bernard. Probably, I'm sure it happens with you, you as well. It does. When you raise an issue that nobody else in the States is interested in, or only very few are, and certainly they're not senators who do it, uh, you get the calls from the rest of the island. So I have to take up loads of human rights and housing cases across the whole island, not my own constituents. But I felt a duty at the time, you know, because I was a States member, I couldn't refuse anybody. And you, you get those extra... Because you are vocal and controversial, you get those extra calls upon your time and, uh, and you've still got to do your, your constituency work as well. Yeah. You know. I'm going to have to wind this up now because mm. I think the wind's getting a bit too strong for my little camera, but uh, I thank you for your time and perhaps we'll come back again. Thanks a lot. Cheers.